So let's talk about internal energy and the first law of thermodynamics. Okay. So remember, we talked about the, this is the first law of thermodynamics, right? It's change in thermal energy, which we sometimes call internal energy. So thermal energy, internal energy, those are the same thing. Okay. Um, so that's our thermal energy. That's our heat transferred. This is our first law of thermodynamics. There's one other way to write it. Because remember, if we change this from environment to system, all we do is change the sign. So this is also a way to write the first law of thermodynamics. It just deals with the other kind of work. Okay? So this is work done by the system. This is work done on the system. Okay? Yeah, and sometimes uh, the thermal energy is called U, which I don't think is a good way to do it because thermal energy is K plus U in the microscopic. So just, I like to use it, use this notation, but don't be confused if you also see it written as a U. All right, yeah. Especially if you're out in like YouTube video land, there's like lots of different notations people use. So, sorry. Okay, let's try this. <laughs> okay. Um, well, the answer's changed. So, <laughs> what's the sign of work? Positive. Positive. Why? This is the force from the environment, right? The displacement's this way, so you have positive work. Okay. What is Q? Plus, minus, zero. Why is it zero? Insulated, right? So if you're completely insulated, can heat go in or out of your system? No, right? And if heat can't go in or out of your system, what's the only other thing that can change? Temperature, right? Thermal energy is temperature. That's the way we measure it. So if work gets bigger and this is zero, this has to go up, okay? And so this should also go along with your intuition. If you compress a gas, right, and there's nowhere for the heat to go, the temperature has to go up, okay? So in terms of the first law, we're increasing the work done by the environment. That increases the temperature because Q is zero. What happens if we take the insulation away? Then what happens? Then what would stay the same? Yeah, the temperature, right? Then all the heat that's generated by doing the work can escape, okay? So then... What doesn't change? You said temperature, right? So thermal energy is zero, which means whatever work you do is going to be equal to negative heat. Okay? The heat leaves the system, the temperature stays the same. Okay? So this is how we use the first law of thermodynamics. This equation keeps track of what's happening. So you have to pay attention to the situation. If something's insulated, Q is automatically zero. Okay? Work, you have to figure out if it's work environment or work system and what the sign is. So that's why it's really important that we've been talking about how to figure out the sign of the work, okay? Because that's going to affect how you change the temperature, all right? So for instance, in an isothermal process, what's the change of thermal energy? What's the change in energy? Thermal energy. So you have an isothermal process. Wait, there's a change in isothermal energy? What? So an isothermal process uh -huh. means what? Same temperature. temperature. Yeah. Okay? So what thing is zero on here if you have an isothermal process? Energy. Or I'm not this, yeah, the energy, right. Yeah. right? Because this depends on temperature. So if the temperature doesn't change, this doesn't change, and whatever it start that whatever it's, this is a difference <laughs> in thermal energy, so whatever it started at, whatever it ended at, so the change is zero, okay? Your change in temperature is zero, your change in thermal energy is zero, all right? Which means the work and heat have, are the only things that change, okay? What about in an isochoric process? What's zero in an isochoric process? Probably. Out of these things. So work. Oh, uh, work. Work, all right? So in an isochoric process, work is zero. Okay? In an isothermal process, change in thermal energy is zero. We haven't learned about when Q is zero yet, unfortunately. Okay? 
you know, the other process, the isobaric process, none of these things are zero. Okay? But the nice thing about the isobaric process is it's really easy to calculate work. All right? Because remember, an isobaric process is a flat line. So what's the area under the curve? Square. Base times height. Yeah, it's just a rectangle. <clears throat> so P delta V. Okay? So then it's easy to calculate work, but it's not zero. Okay? Remember, isochore process, work is zero. Isothermal process, change in thermal energy is zero. So you can automatically go to here and figure out the third variable, right? So if you know you have an isochoric process and you know your change in temperature, you can easily calculate heat, all right? If you know you have an isothermal process and you can calculate your work, then you can easily calculate heat, all right? All right, anyway, so this increases. Here's a, I don't really like this slide. But it sort of gives you the idea of what's going on uh, with the signs. But we already know all this stuff, so it's just summing up, okay? Here's our first law of thermodynamics, all right? We know if work is done on the system, then your work is negative, right? So if you have some sort of compression, then you have negative work. If you have an expansion, right, if there's work done by the system, if the gas is pushing the piston, then the work is positive. All right. We know if we go heat into the system, Q is positive. Heat out of the system means Q is negative. And I'm showing you this because the signs are going to matter a lot when we're using this. And you're also going to have to remember if you're using work done by the environment or work done by the system because that flips the sign. Okay, That's all the stuff that needs to be kept track of. So here's another question. They were asking about Q and K. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> okay. So let's talk about this. So we have this situation. Okay? Now, remember, this, if you calculate these, this is the work done by the system. Okay? So work done by the environment. This is A is a larger negative work than B. Okay, so we know work for A is a large negative number. Work for B is a slightly smaller negative number. So then we have two other variables we have to worry about. Change in thermal energy, and then it's asking about Q. Okay? What do we know about the change in thermal energy? Well, it's not zero, right? We're going from one temperature to another temperature. Remember, for, for I, yeah, for I... This has PI, VI, TI. So it has the same pressure, volume, and temperature that they start at, and they both end at the same pressure, volume, and temperature, but they're not the same, like I and F don't have the same pressure, volume, and temperature. Well, they have the same pressure, just about. Okay? But because each of these dots represents a state, we start and end at the same state. Okay? So that means our change in temperature is the same for both gases, which means our change in thermal energy, it's not zero, but it's the same, okay? So for instance, if our change in thermal energy was 10, okay, let's say work for A is negative 2, and work for B would be something smaller, so negative 1, okay? That means our Q for A would be 12, and our Q for B would be 11. All right, because they both have to add up to the same number. And so since this is a larger negative value for A, it has to be a larger positive value when you're talking about Q for A. All right, so the answer is going to be A. All right, you're just balancing this equation. This is the same for both process A and B. These are different, and you can use that to calculate Q. Yes? Is it true to say the statement more work, more heat? Um, as long as thermal energy doesn't change. Right. So, yeah. It's not. If it's, iso <laughs> <laughs> if it's isothermic, then change in thermal energy is zero. This is a change in thermal energy that's just a constant for both processes. Okay? So as long as you start and end at the same point, delta E thermal is the same for each process. If it's an isotherm, then it's also zero. Okay, yeah. No, I know it's confusing. Okay, let's take a break.
Come back in about 10 minutes. That would be 9.07-ish. <laughs> All right, let's talk about this. So, we start with a warm drink in a glass bottle and we put it in the freezer. Okay, let's, we're assuming this <clears throat> bottle is sealed. Okay, so what does not change? Which variable does not change? Well, that's it. Work is zero because which variable doesn't change? What kind of process is this? Isochoric because the bottle stays the same volume. Okay, and if volume doesn't change, that's isochoric. That means work is zero. Okay, what about heat? Is it going in or out of your system? Out. Is that positive or negative? Negative. Okay, so heat's going out of your system. That's negative. What happens to the temperature? It goes down. So that is a negative change. Okay, so your change in thermal energy is negative. Your heat is negative because heat's leaving the system and your work is zero. Okay? All right, for the next one, you compress a gas which is thermally isolated from its surroundings. What does thermally isolated mean? It means heat can't get in or out. So usually that's like a thermos or an, a you know, cooler or some sort of insulation. Okay? If heat can't get in or out, that means which of these variables is zero? Q. Q. Okay, so Q is zero when heat can't go in or out, right? Which means Q is also zero in C, right? That's, that also says it's thermally isolated, all right? So for B, you're compressing a gas. And we're talking about the work done by the environment. So if you're compressing a gas, the environment is pushing on that gas, okay? Is that positive or negative work? Positive. Positive. The environment is doing the work, so that's positive work. Which means the change in thermal energy should also be positive. Okay, here you're expanding a gas. That means the work done by the environment is negative. Negative. Okay, and that means your change in thermal energy should be negative. Negative. Okay. Yes. Why is expanding a gas negative work? Because that means the force is coming from the gas, which means it's going. The displacement is this way and the work done by the environment is this way, right? So if you think about the, uh, a system with, with a piston, okay? The environment's trying to push down, but the piston's moving up if it's expanding. So that means your force and your displacement should be opposite, and that's negative work, okay? So that would be positive work done by the gas, but it's negative work done on the environment. Okay. Um, so, 
and let's say, so you very slowly compress a gas which is in thermal contact with a large water bath. Now, when, whenever you see slowly <clears throat> and large water bath, what kind of process should you think of? Yeah, isothermal. Okay, an isothermal process, which means the temperature doesn't change, which means which of these things is zero? Uh, temperature. Yeah, the change in temperature is zero, and the change in thermal energy is zero. Okay, if you're compressing, what does that mean about the work? Work should be positive. positive. Work should be positive because you're pushing down on the piston and it's moving down. Okay, so positive work. What does that mean about Q? Negative. Negative, right? He should be leaving the system as you compress it in order to maintain the same temperature. Okay. All right, so that's how the first law works, all right? So here's a fun fact. Let's say this is our first law, okay? If we have a cyclical process, meaning we start and end at the same point, what does that tell us about our change in thermal energy? Zero, right? Because at this state, pressure, volume, and temperature are the same. So you, you can, you've changed them as you go over here, but once you get back here, the temperature is the same temperature you started with. So for all cyclical processes, change in temperature is zero, which means change in thermal energy also zero, okay? So that means for any cyclar, cyclical process, the work done by your system, meaning the area inside this curve, is equal to your heat, okay? So the work done by the system is equal to the heat. And if you want to actually calculate the work, right, you integrate this way, and then you integrate that way, and the work is just the area enclosed in the cycle. All right? So this is the work done by the system, and it should be equal to the heat because we know our change in thermal energy is zero. All right? We start and end at the same process. And why is it useful to have cyclical processes? Think about your car, right? How does the car, how does a car engine work? Pistons? Yeah, the pistons, right? It cycles. So it starts at one point, and it comes back to that point, and then it starts over. If it only did that once and ended at a different point, how far would you be able to travel? <laughs> Not that far, right? So you want your processes for like motors and engines and things to be repeatable. Okay, you want to get back to your original state so you can go around again. If you only do it once, it's not very useful, you, it's not very sustainable. Okay, you, have, you won't be able to get that much energy out of the system. So you want processes to be cyclical. So all engines have a cycle. Okay, you can draw on a PV diagram and then you can figure out how much work you can get out of it by integrating. Okay, so that's, you know, heaters, car engines, refrigerators, all of those things have cyclical processes.